Ahoy! And welcome to another episode of Screens and Pixels, in which I recommend a ton of stuff that I found somewhere on the internet. Today I've got a TV show, two music things, one Instagram, and a podcast. So first of all, Jane the Virgin. I'm probably really late with this, which is what I usually am when it comes to TV shows. This was recommended to me by Rosianna a long, long time ago, and I finally started watching it. It is on Netflix. The basic premise of this show is that there is a girl called Jane who is a virgin, and when she goes for a checkup, she actually by accident gets artificially inseminated and then she gets pregnant. And that is sort of where the story kicks off. It features three generations of single women. They're all amazing characters in their own way. And I guess one of the biggest features of it is that it sort of parodies telenovelas, which I don't really have a lot of experience with, but I really enjoy the concept. It's quite playful. It's got some more like serious topics, but in general, it is just a lot of fun. I also recommended this show to my friend Lena, who you might know from the channel just kiss my frog and she has definitely been converted for one second can you just name for me another show that genuinely and thoroughly shows a woman thinking about having an abortion seriously and doesn't judge her for it a woman who doesn't have a very very naturally slender figure and it's not commented on or made a feature of or um, made part of the plot or a show that centers most predominantly on the relationship between three generations of women. No other one. And that is why Jade the Virgin is so amazing. Also Carlos. Also a show that is bilingual and doesn't apologize for it and doesn't make the actors put on weird accents and still talk in English to show they're speaking another language. Just speaks the other language and expects us English viewers to read the subtitles. Love it. Now my next recommendation is going to be a very obscure one that I'm pretty sure no one has heard of before and it is the Hamilton soundtrack. Again, I'm gonna probably blame this a little bit on Rosianna. I feel like if there's people who haven't listened to Hamilton yet at this point, it's probably because you're thinking, it's so popular, everyone's telling me to listen to it, so I'm not gonna do it. Basically, for the last three months, it is all I have listened to. You know when you have your Spotify custom recommendations list? That has completely been thrown off because it doesn't really know what I like listening to anymore. At this point, I don't think I have to explain too much about the plot, but it is about Alexander Hamilton. Go listen to the songs, listen to them in order, and it is surprisingly easy to figure out the whole story without doing any additional research, which is basically what I did. My favorite songs are probably non-stop, Satisfied, The Room Where It Happens, and Blow Us All Away. If you have some favorite songs, which you definitely have if you've listened to it, leave them in the comments. Also, in case you didn't know yet, Hamilton is coming to Europe. I don't know when, I hope it is soon, and I'm gonna try really hard to get my hands on some tickets. Then next, the other musical recommendation is an Australian band called OPEP. I actually saw them play live, I think about a month ago, and they just released their first album. I didn't realize this was their first album. I'd listened to a couple of the songs they had up on Spotify from their EP, but now the album is out and it's called Stadium Cake. I'm really bad at describing music, so I'm just gonna leave a link to their album in the description. They've got some really like beautiful haunting songs and some really lovely upbeat songs. I loved seeing them live, so definitely go check them out as well. The next, a podcast. Lots of people have been chatting about this and it is the Control All Delete podcast by Emma Gannon, which she started to sort of promote her book, which is also called Control All Delete, How I Grew Up Online. She is a blogger, she used to be a journalist, she's freelance, and she has a different guest on her show every week and they sort of talk about the topic that is related to that guest. I think my favorite one so far is the episode where she talks to the woman who wrote the Fuck Off Fund article, which I don't know if you've come across, but I'll put in the description as well. They also talk about things like feminism, productivity, like having a profile online, and a huge variety of other stuff, so if that sounds like something you would like, go check it out. Then my final recommendation is an Instagram account, and this is for you lovers of hashtag plants of Instagram slash succulents cacti of Instagram. The account is called Cabin Shop with a K, and it is run by Carol Morley, and she lives in East London, and she owns a little independent an online business where she does ceramics and planters and I actually bought a little planter for Lex's birthday. They've all got really nice patterns and some of them have spikes. I love this Instagram, it's really nice to see like how she does her work and maybe you'll get inspired and want to buy something from her Etsy shop. So I'll put links to that in the description as well. All right, so those are all my recommendations for this Screens and Pixels. If there's anything that you want to recommend that falls into this category, please leave it in a comment below and I'll talk to you guys later. Doei!